Hello and welcome to this artist conversation in the context of Miscelia about networking as a female artist. As a curator today, I have the pleasure to talk to the Latvian artist um, Yeva Baloda, who is talking today with me about notions of success, networking ecosystems. The exhibition focus deals with the notions of artistic success and that artistic success depends on a healthy network. And we ask ourselves the questions, what does this network look like in a neoliberal society that puts competition over solidarity? What does artistic success require and what does success look like right now as we're all redefining our lives while we're going through this difficult moment? So it feels like the context of the exhibition suddenly became a really relevant urgency with the times we're dealing right now. And we chose the thought figure of mycelia, so thread-like cells of a fungus that are invisible in the soil of uh, forests, for example, and build healthy ecosystems as we are, um, have the belief that a lot of the networks that we are joining are rather invisible, but rather potent for the outcomes of our careers and our lives. So with further ado, I have the pleasure to welcome you, Yiva. And the first question I would like to ask, yes, you've been working very hard um, to exhibit in the exhibition and shown your, your works. What is um, are the works that you um, built for the exhibition are about and how do they relate to the topics of artistic success, ecosystem and detoxification? And while you're talking, I'm happily doing a screen share so that we can see what we are actually talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Uh, thank you, Annabelle, for the introduction. Uh, so, um, when, when I was introduced to this project, um, it really felt very appealing to me because I also, I do believe that um, both artistic and, and also female collaboration and support is very essential. And, um, and also the, the way of connectivity between female, females and female artists um, is very different from from what we find uh, with the friendship with the or con connection with the males um, so yeah it felt very natural for me to work um, in this project and also the idea with collaboration with another artist which in my case was Silke um, and then um, and then great um, thing that I really enjoyed it was uh, that we had to um, talk with each other and, and I was very happy to have um, Silke's email and to read about her life, very personal life and about her interest in the, in the arts. So it took us some time to kind of figure out what direction we are going to go and what are our interests in, in art. And what we found is that we are both quite interested into, and, and our practices are very tactile. We work with our hands. She's a painter and, and I work with analog film and the, this is also a very tactile medium. So in a way, our hands are in a way kind of like metaphors for our work creation. And also hand is something that um, touches, touches the outer surface and, and um, so we decided to, to use hands and in a literal way in our work. So um, in my work, you will find um, a photography of two female hands holding each other and supporting each other. Um, and then Silke painted, um, I think it's both of our hands. One hand is mine and then it's her hand. Um, so that, that is one. Uh, yeah, there you can see it. Um, so that's the main kind of uh, key uh, element in our works. But then I was also working with um, analog slides and uh, I, I made the collection of slides where, uh, which are 35 millimeter um, photochemical film on which I was growing a fungus. So I was kind of trying out how uh, this medium could take on 
um, this uh, mycelia um, and, and to, to let the, the fungus grow on the film. And uh, yeah, it was quite challenging. I had to make many tests and um, I didn't know how it would look like, um, but it was quite, um, yeah, it was quite a great experience to see that in a way artists, uh, artists not always have to be present when the work is created. So I, I just left the fungus on the film and it was growing on its own and I just had to monitor it and visit time by time and just give a little bit of water. So um, yeah, it was quite, uh, quite challenging and I'm quite happy with the results. It's also a very interesting way as um, we relate a lot of the contemporary art practices to very cognitive labor. And in the case of the work of the two of you, you chose a very tactile and very hands-on approach, which gives it um, another, another notion of labor and artistic practice. And I mean, you took a, a real bold chance because failure is course once you work with organic material is always part of the process and um, as much as we are talking about art and success we're also talking about failure because you cannot have one without the other so you're basically putting that into the the piece as well because one of the things that was very important um, while I curated the show I always said that the we're taking a chance on this exhibition, but there's always a space for failure because you never know once the artist um, duos are working with each other if the outcome will be successful, meaning if there is a product at the end or if we're just going to have an exchange with letters and emails and Skype meetings that just did not work out. And I think that every collaboration can have this um, very um, uncertain moment where you don't know what the outcome will be, right? Yeah, definitely, of course, yeah. But but I think in, in our case, it was quite, uh, quite successful. We were both quite open to conversation and we were sharing our ideas and sending some sketches and, and asking for advice. So even though it was only through the emails, but it, it felt very open because I think we were both very open and very... Uh, beginning we were very honest and it, it felt like it's quite natural for us to share and to be honest to a stranger so yeah it was uh, quite great and I'm also quite I'm quite used to collaborating with uh, artists and other different people and that's that's kind of another I would say um, it's something that is very present in my artistic practice because uh, I do like to collaborate I like to share I like to I think artists in general has to be open to a conversation because uh, otherwise like you can be so stuck in your own reality and uh, and if you really want to um, show your work you have to be open at least to the conversation with the audience but of course I also think it's great for artists to, to collaborate and not to be stuck just with their own practice it's quite healthy, you know, to be challenged also. And even if it fails also, I think it's always a healthy thing to do. Yeah, and I think uh, in particular for this exhibition, as we had to adjust uh, due to the impact of corona, we had to, we, we did an, a physical exhibition, but now um, the opening is accompanied by this huge program we've done uh, in online formatting where we choose to release these conversations to give a bit more insight and also to search for a, a discussion with a broader um, network and that is right now known and unknown because we hope that this exhibition will engage as many as possible. So can you guide us a little bit through what you've learned through your mini collaboration, through the exhibitions, what challenges did you overcome, what lessons did you learn? Um, yeah, I think I, I learned that it's possible to meet somebody um, without actually physically meeting and, and to uh, meet the needs of the other person. And uh, yeah, I think, it, yeah, I really, as I said, I'm really interested into this idea of, of sisterhood, of support of female artists and, and artists in general. And uh, as opposed to 
you know, to feel, to be a contestant to, to the other person. I really don't, I don't understand this whole idea about artists as, as being in competition with each other. I think we are not running Olympic Games here, right? It should be about conversation, about willingness to open and to talk and to share and to, to learn. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite a good conversation we were having and it felt like, it felt very natural to do, to do so. Yeah. And what are your thoughts around artistic success and maybe even about failure? Uh, so, yeah, I suppose, for, firstly, we have to define what is artistic su success because for so many people it can be something, you know, very different. Like, I personally am not interested into um, selling my works, like how much they sell or how much money I get on the end. But if we just talk about um, successfully um, finishing your work or... Um, releasing your work um, and maybe um, some sort of recognition, which also, I don't know if this is the main goal, but uh, if you want to be, to work as an artist, I think you have to be um, open to the conversation. You have to be curious. I think this is kind of key element, curiosity, because um, if you're not curious, then why, why making art in general? Um, and, and also, um, I'm kind of a little bit idealist. I, I believe that um, we have to convey some sort of ideas and we have to, um, we need to learn and we need to, um, we need to have willingness to understand things. And I think art is something that really helps, um, helps us to, to understand the world we're living in. Um, and the language of the art is um, also something that is so different from from the text or from the philosophy that we can read. It kind of makes it very um, ideas to be very um, impractical, but also very um, psychic. I like this idea of of our art being as a psychic form of um, conversation. So yeah, I would say. Curiosity and, and of, of course also persistence and, and discipline is also very important if you want to physically uh, make uh, work. You know, uh, it's not, we are not living in times where you can just like, well, some people maybe they are just like having some ideas and then they have a privilege to have some, somebody making, execute, executing the works. But I, I, I also am quite a, maybe conservative, but I think it's good that artists can make his own work and can make it with his own hands. It's so interesting to have all these conversations because I think artistic success is something that we all are afraid to talk about while um, we all need to be very transparent uh, that um, success is of course related to a certain financial stability. I think that this sort of transparency is something that we sometimes lack in the art world that we're, doing, we're not very willing to talk about money unless it is about high, uh, high sales and the art market in that terms. But I think the, the notion of financial stability, especially right now in Corona, that so many people are impacted, we cannot leave the notion of financial stability aside. While I do agree that we too often relate success to the accumulation of wealth and power. I also agree that we need different metrics to define whatever success looks like. And I think it's also, at least for me as a curator, it's rather interesting to talk about artistic success with artistic practices and artists, and also to think what does good art look like and what does good art even mean? What does art even mean? Because I think all these questions are somehow related when we talk about artistic success. They are like interlinked. And um, as this exhibition has a really gendered focus on, on women, it is also important to think about that success is something that is shaped through race, gender, and class. Like even in 2020, that is an important factor we have to consider while we talk about success. Right? Yeah, of course, and, and uh, especially because of the, these reasons, uh, we have to be uh, open. There's no other way we can, you know, if we isolate ourselves and we ignore that there are other kinds of people and 
there are different social um, uh, backgrounds for all of us, then uh, we're just not, we cannot exist in this world. So there should be some sort of support. There should be sol solidarity. There should be some sort of um, mutual understanding um, or at least willingness to understand. So, yeah. You were mentioning before that you're interested in this notion of sisterhood and that has a very mystic approach. I mean, if we go throughout the um, history of women and the history of solidarity among women, the notion of sisterhood has a very long historic, um, historic notion and historic context. But can you go a little bit more into what kind of solidarity and networks you think that artists need? And what uh, structures help you in your personal practice? Uh, so yeah, for, so first of all, definitely more collaborations. Um, I, I find that in artists' world, um, artists are in general they are very individualistic people. They like to, you know, especially painters. They're all their work is in in their studio. You just you spend a lot of hours contemplating on your own work and. And of course it has to be like this, but on the other hand, it's really great to have some freshness from the other person or other artist, and to really um, to expand yourself into other ways of thinking and, and creating. And uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's good to, yeah, just to be open and to, to challenge yourself also. And, and as you said, to allow yourself to fail and to, question yourself also um, and yeah I'm also I'm also I, I like to call myself a socialist from from the work that I do apart from my artistic practice I, I work with film and organizing film events and and uh, giving workshops so I think sharing also is great you know giving um, um, sharing your skills with people and allow them to express themselves in in different ways and to to find their own ways of expression so um yeah sharing is kind of key thing you have to be you have to share there's no other way if you are not sharing then everything will stop at some point or if somebody else you know we are all there because we're we have shared our knowledge so uh, yeah, I've, I've met some artists who are very kind of, they think that, oh, this is like, like, I would ask, how did you do this certain thing? And they would be very kind of like, um, you know, I'm not going to say this to you. That's my secret. But um, I think, you know, this is not how it works. We have to share. We have to, because one, one thing is that you find, but then the other will continue with this. It's, it's the same like in a science. You also, if one scientist has, has found some, uh, I don't know, uh, new uh, elements, then it has to be researched by the others and only by mutual and communal activity we can actually um, expand and, and find something new. So, uh, yeah, I think it's very essential to... I think it's actually very relevant what you just mentioned because as we are facing all corona and the impact of corona, um, sharing and knowledge transfer and being very transparent about measurements and things and also skill shares. I think we all are um, experiencing in our work more or less the sharing uh, of our communities and how suddenly we had all to acquire new skills in order to um, prepare our work as much as we can. And as you just mentioned, um, scientists all over the world are right now very engaged in finding new vac vaccines and treatments for whatever and um, it is important that um, the findings will will benefit the, the global world and not just a certain corporations right that's always okay, exactly and last but not least what qualities and you already mentioned curiosity but maybe you can think about a few other qualities do you think um one needs for a successful collaboration <clears throat> yeah i suppose openness of course is the key element um, and willingness to to hear the other um, 
yeah of course this curiosity as i mentioned already it's 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 key. Yeah, I mean, you have to be curious about what is happening in, inside of you and outside of you and different realities we're living in and which, which are outside of us and, and, uh, and not to be too judgmental of the other. And uh, I know it's maybe it's, it's, it can be quite hard like you to, to be so empathetic and not all of us are able to be so. But um, I think curiosity is the, the key element that helps to at least to kind of reach closer to the other uh, realm. And uh, yeah, if you're curious, then, then you can reach further. You mentioned before we start the recording of the conversation, a certain willingness to vulnerability. And I think that's actually a very key component when we're talking also about sisterhood and also about this notion of being close and willing to share certain things. Um, you, you make yourself vulnerable, right? Because as soon as you share more about you as a human person and about your ideas, of course, there can, there can be a backlash, there can be a certain form of critique that might go under the skin. But it's also the notion of to be successful, you might need to risk a few things, right? Yeah, and you have to be uh, you have to be honest, basically, and that's you know you just have to be honest. There is no other way. Like you can fake things, but like it won't be true. And maybe that's that also answers the question of successful artistic uh, 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 career is that you have to be honest. You have to you know you cannot fake what what you're interested in. You have to just. Just do what's really what 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 you're um, passionate about, and uh, and and try to challenge different borders of it, and yeah, yeah, a certain level of authenticity. That's a lovely note to end the conversation, Yeva. I want to thank you so much, dear uh, viewer. Uh, this is part of a whole conversation uh, in the ex exhibition. So if you haven't. Have a look at the other videos that are being released throughout the exhibition. We're also having two panel discussions. Several of the conversations will be in German. Others will be in English. So you have the absolute joy to um, choose and use the hashtag on social media, Musilia Muk, Musilia as the exhibition title, and Muk, M-U-C, for Munich, so that we can be in conversation because we really would love to hear from you about your notions of artistic success, what you are right now learning through the pandemic we're all facing, how are you really finding success? Please get in touch. Until next time, thank you very much.